Yes, Mike. I've got uh, three questions, if you'll indulge me. Uh, first one, in the state of Washington, to get licensed as a cosmetologist, it takes 1,600 hours of training and education. And cosmetology specialists are responsible for uh, helping people with their personal grooming and personal appearance. And according to the U.S. Bureau of Justice Statistics, it's only 840 hours of training and education for a police officer. So, Basic law enforcement. Right. So how can you, can you try to speak on that? Like, do you think that law enforcement needs more training and education since there's a greater responsibility placed on, on your guys' shoulders to uh, safeguard people or try to de-escalate situations, to keep the peace, you call the situations from civil disputes to insane violent situations, and yet the requirements for training and education is almost half that of somebody to cut hair. So I would say that it's when they're done with their education cutting hair, they're ready to roll. When they're done with basic law enforcement academy, they are not ready to roll. It's, there's at least another three more months of one-on-one -on -one training in the field training program for a, a new hire um, before they, we can even consider to get them out on the streets. And if we have a rock star, for instance, who after that three-month training program is ready to go solo, they're not by themselves. They are close to a supervisor. We usually keep them on day shift. There's a variety of other things that we do. Um, and fortunately, in our situation, we normally have a sergeant that is, is in close proximity to help them and guide them. Um, whereas with the county, which of course I have a lot of experience, those deputies are out there by themselves. And so you, you may, they may keep them in the training program a little bit longer. Um, it's they're just a ton that these officers need to learn we are placing more responsibility on these kids I can call them kids because the people I've been hiring are younger than both my kids um, and so you bring up a very valid point you know on the flip side of that I was a contractor for many many years you don't need any education I just need money to buy my license and my bond and then guess what Steve Schumacher contracting you want to hire me I may have no experience whatsoever so it's kind of how you compare certain things Question number two. Yeah, so number two is a two-part question. Do you consider yourself a peace officer or a law enforcement officer? And how do you reconcile the differences with that since the police have a monopoly on violence? Police have a monopoly on violence? I'm, well, I'm not gonna respond to that last part. I will okay. tell you at times I'm a peace officer and at times I'm a law enforcement officer. Okay. okay. And question number three. All right, question number three is not coming to me right now. I'll, I'll, I'll think about we'll it. come back, back to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm ready for more questions. Yes, man, in the back. Or we, we're trying. Mike. Uh, yeah, remember my third question? It, uh, it built on the other two. So the first one was, you know, not enough training education for law enforcement. The second was peace officer or law enforcement officer um, with a monopoly of violence. And so that, to unpack that a little bit, um, and I know you want to hear from the community on our experiences with crime, with violence. So there, I know there are members in this room uh, who have worked for the city who have assaulted myself and my 10-year-old daughter uh, on video. We've had uh, other, another member of the police department who is in the room who threatened to put me in a cage because I had a sign in a park on the 4th of July. Um, we have. Uh, and an individual who incited that violence, who called to have that violence done upon me. Um, and then we had another two, well, it was actually four officers, two of which went into my house armed uh, without announcing, so armed home invasion. So my question, it leads to this, like there's a monopoly of violence, and it's, and it's police as a whole, and this is a widespread thing across the country where, you know, police officers shoot people and get paid vacations, right? So they get administrative leave, and they're not... They're not brought up on murder charges until after a long process. So my question is, are you gonna hold the police officers and city officials to the same level of accountability as the general public? Okay, so I will tell you, you and I had one-on-one -on -one discussion in my office, and we had this very same discussion. And so, um, as you're aware, you may reference a possible litigation, so I'm not gonna respond to any of the specifics with any of the things sure. dealing with the Aberdeen Police Department. I will tell you as the chief of police, it is my responsibility to make sure that they follow the rules, to make sure that they follow the standard operating procedures, and, I, and that is my responsibility, and I make sure the citizens will get that. So as a, as a policy, then you're gonna 
do policy but not police the police? Like who, who polices the police? Like that's the question. If, if they break the law, if they violate the rights of the people, do you arrest them for breaking the law and then prosecute them like a regular person? Or do you say, hey, hold on, we need to evaluate what you did, put you on leave, look at the policy, and then maybe bring charges? Because that's, the, that's what's been happening across the country. I'm asking for equality, transparency, openness, and equal rights, and not preferential treatment because somebody's wearing a badge and a gun. Okay, and I'll give you my last response, or my same response again. My responsibility to hold my folks accountable. We have standard operating procedures, which are best practices, and they will follow that. Um, you know, the wonderful thing with modern technology, things like that. And we are out in the city, and you'll have cameras all over you. When I went out to the riverfront property, there was a half a dozen cameras yeah. on, on me. I'm good with that. Yeah. I have no problems. You probably figured out I have no problems with a public speaking. I have no problems with people recording me. I'm all about transparency. I'm going to be transparent with respect to the independent audit with our organization. Some, in some aspects, it may not be flattering, but it is what it is. We have got to know where we're at before we can move forward. So yeah. hopefully I gave you somewhat of a response. I'll add something else to that. Um, you know, we're all the masters of our own reality. And there's, a, and there's a, and I, I know what your views are of what reality is. And I don't think you do, are. we haven't actually had a conversation. And I will tell you that I am very, very glad that I am the elected representative for the city of Aberdeen making these decisions and that you are not, so. <laughs> I don't believe in wielding okay. power over people. You know, I hear you. Thank you, Mike. So that's, that's your, your belief, not mine. Okay. Yes, back there, please. 